We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I'd like to welcome everybody who has come out to the meeting tonight, and also those will be viewing the uh, meeting on our G10 uh, channel. Uh, to begin the meeting tonight, I would like to uh, recognize we have a troop of young ladies here from the Girl from Girl Scout Troop 3462. Uh, their leaders are, are Leah Reynolds and Heather Dixon. If you could bring your folks up here, I would I would certainly appreciate them leading us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance tonight. We're going to uh, we're going to do the pledge, and then we will. Uh, remain standing for the uh, invocation by our city attorney. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause to acknowledge your presence in our lives and in the life of our city and community, and to give you thanks, to give you thanks for the blessings you so graciously bestow upon us individually and corporately as the city of Jacksonville. As we enter this election season, we are so thankful that we live in a democracy, that we have the right to vote and that we exercise that right. But let us never forget that that privilege and right and all the privileges that we have as Americans was paid for by a price and is still being paid for today by a price. That men and women are serving to keep those available to us and we should honor them by exercising them. And we do pray tonight for our service members who are serving here and around the world for their families, their anxious families. We pray your safety would be with them and your guidance and direction would be with them. And as always, we pray for our mayor and for our council that you would lead and guide them in the decisions they're called upon to make this evening. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Everybody can be seated. Is anyone working on any special badges or anything? Which ones? All right. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much for helping us out tonight. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Y'all can go. Did you want to tell him something about your badge? Oh, tell me about your badge. Which one? Fun patches. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All those are so neat. And you have to look at that baby's back, too. She's showing you her back. Well, you're getting some there, aren't you? Your patch collection is rolling. Okay. Well, thank you so thank much you, for sharing that with us. You're doing That's good. Cool. Good job, ladies. Wow. I want one of those s'mores. Yeah, s'mores. S'mores. Yeah. S'mores is dangerous. Sounds like a fun. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, Council, uh, each of you should have received a copy of the agenda, proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would uh, ask, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve, but also to add an item uh, under consent, I, uh, consent agenda, uh, you can make this item 6B, I guess, uh, would be a good number here. This is a refinancing of some revenue bonds at a better interest rate. Mr. Carter. And also, Mayor, we'd ask that you delete item number six, the use of contingency funds, that item, please. Yes, uh, and, and delete item six. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, we have some presentations uh, for tonight, and I'm going to come around front here. Wow. 
Right, for our first presentation this evening, I have a proclamation, but before I read it, uh, I want to invite up Ms. Amanda Compton. Uh, she's present here. She's the membership director for Girl Scouts of North Carolina, Coastal Pines, Jones, and Onslow County. Leah Reynolds, troop leader. Heather Dixon. And all my girls back up here again for uh, joining us back. I could have kept you up here. <clears throat> On March 12th, uh, two, 1912, Juliet Daisy Gordon Lowe assembled a group of girls from Savannah, Georgia for the first ever Girl Scout meeting. She believed all girls should have an opportunity to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. Today, over 3.2 million girls and adults are active Girl, Sc girl Scout members. This city is pleased to present a proclamation in recognition of Girl Scout Week. <clears throat> Whereas March 12th, 2016 marks the 104th anniversary of Girl Scouts of the, United, of the USA, founded by Juliet Gordon Lowe in 1912 in Savannah, Georgia. Whereas throughout its distinguished history, Girl Scouting has inspired million of, millions of girls and women with the highest ideals of courage, confidence, and character. And whereas through the Girl Scout leadership experience, girls gain knowledge and develop skills that will serve them a lifetime so that they may contribute to their communities. And whereas Girl Scouting takes an active role in increasing girls' awareness of the opportunities available to them today in science, technology, engineering, math, and the arts, as well as other fields that can expand their horizons. And whereas Girl Scouts has shaped the lives of 53% of female senior executives and business owners, 60% of women in Congress, and virtually every female astronaut. And whereas, in partnership with nearly 7,000 adult volunteers, Girl Scouts that's of North Carolina Coastal Pines serves almost 25,000 girl members in 41 central and eastern North Carolina counties, including 848 of adult and girl members in Onslow County Services Unit. <clears throat> now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the week of March 6th through the 12th of 2016 as Girl Scout Week in the city of Jacksonville, and I applaud the commitment Girl Scout Scouting has made to support the leadership development of girls in North Carolina. How about that? We would just like to say thank you for supporting Girl Scouts in Onslow County, and Girl Scout cookie sale lasts till March 5th. <laughs> So make sure you uh, check out our Girl Scouts outside of the Walmarts and Walgreens selling cookies. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, girls. Thank, Thank you. Okay, let's get some good pictures. We'll move this. And any of you folks who want to come up and take pictures, come right on up. My picture taken with all these pretty ladies. <laughs> well, mess up a picture. Corny to come forward and stand with her daughter and, and granddaughter who are, who are uh, scouts. So come on up here, Deb. <coughs> I'll embarrass you good. you get me to mark the office. Oh. So stand up there. I was a
you. So when do y'all start selling the cookies? Four weeks ago, okay. I was gonna say I already have some, I've had some, so. I was hoping I didn't get them illegally. Uh, next we have, uh, we have a recognition of the Jacksonville Council, uh, Council for the Arts. Uh, and this is our art block contest winners for this year. Um, I'd like to ask Cindy Edwards, who's the interim board chair, and Rebecca Cooper. Uh, who's the gallery manager here, if you would join me up front. <clears throat> As part of the inaugural art block held in spring of 2015, an art contest was held uh, for elementary school children, uh, grades K through five, and middle uh, school children, grades six through eight. The contest was sponsored by the Jacksonville Onslow Council for the Arts, and the theme of the contest was, what does Jacksonville mean to you? The Arts Council and the winning artists requested an opportunity to have the winning artwork displayed at City Hall, which is being done as we speak, right? So actually there's a piece of work right there. Is Colin Smith and his family here? I didn't see his name. Is this the artiste? This is the artiste. <laughs> All right. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you for coming out tonight. And this is your? How old are you? All right. Colin uh, Smith, he's from uh, Karen Cowan Edwards Art School, was the first place winner in the elementary school grades K five through five category. And I'd like to show, uh, this is his winning work here. And congratulations, Colin, good job. I know you and your parents are very proud of this accomplishment, and uh, uh, we, we appreciate y'all taking the time to come out tonight. And I do have a little something for you. This is it's not much, but it's a little something I wanted to give you in recognition of your uh, uh, job well done here. couldn't be with us tonight, but we did want to show you his fine work here. Um, I see some very steady hands here. I never could keep it within the uh, borders of the, uh, I'd be all over the, <laughs> all over it. Um, but uh, we are also proud that we're going to be able to, to display his artwork here at City Hall. And I also want to thank the Onslow County Arts Council for all they do to stimulate and promote art in our community. Uh, it's one of the finer things that we can look at in our community and appreciate it. 
Sandy. Thank Appreciate you, you know, filling in and acting as the interim ch chair. It's a privilege. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? If you don't mind. Uh, um, so it's an honor to celebrate the uh, work of our young artists and all artists in our community. Um, one of the things that we look forward to, and I'd like to invite the entire community and everyone here to please save the date. April 16th of this year will be Art Block 2.0, and you are all cordially invited to come and visit us at this event. There will be food trucks, there will be art on display, art for sale, and a variety of art and music and entertainment options for your enjoyment. So be right downtown on a Saturday, so come join us on April 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last presentation we'd like, last but not least, uh, we'd like to recognize our uh, USO here. And uh, with that, I would like to ask Marissa uh, Reeder and Chuck Huff if, if you would join me in. Uh, hey, Chuck, I'm going to go out here to see you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm pleased to present a proclamation. Uh, to the USO of North Carolina in honor of the 75th anniversary. We, we had two 75th anniversaries this past week, right? Yes, sir. Um, Jacksonville Center is the oldest continuously serving USO in the uh, entire world, not just the country, but in the entire world. And thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come tonight. And we would like to recognize with this proclamation, and I will read it. Whereas the USO was established and the first USO facility opened in Fayetteville, in 1941, the Jacksonville Center opened in 1942 and has never shut its doors. And whereas the USO of North Carolina Center in Jacksonville is the longest continuously operating USO in the world, and whereas in these 75 years the USO of North Carolina has led the way in strengthening North Carolina's military by providing connections to family, home, and country. And whereas the USO of North Carolina provides critical services that meets emerging needs and serves as force multipliers, augmenting or filling gaps in the in Department of Defense and military services programs to include direct troop support, troop and family resiliency, transition assistance, and family support services to more than 536 military and their families. And whereas today the USO of North Carolina has expanded to meet the evolving needs of our nation's military and operates airport travel centers throughout the region and a mobile center that provides support across the state and during emergency response for North Carolina National Guard. And whereas across North Carolina is 24 employees and nearly 800 volunteers spent 92, hour, 92 cents of every dollar donated to the USO, on the USO programs and services that had a direct impact on our armed services members and their families. Now therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, Mayor of the City of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim the month of February 2016 in honor of the USO's 75th anniversary in the City of Jacksonville and I encourage all citizens to join me in congratulating the USO and extending our gratitude for its exceptional service and contributions to this community. Thank you so much. I'll let you, uh, you like to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, and the citizens of Jacksonville. Uh, Marisa, uh, she's a little under the weather tonight, so uh, I get to be at the microphone. Just wanted to say that um, we wanted to thank you uh, as citizens as we go out and support our service members. Uh, as we heard in prayer, our freedoms that we cherish so dearly, they don't come free. There, there is a price. And uh, it, it's just an honor to go and, and give back to our service members as they are providing for us. So uh, anything that we can do, uh, we just try to. So I just want to say thank you very, thank much. You very much. Yes, sir.
Okay, uh, I know at this point, I know that a lot of you have come just solely for the uh, presentations tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm, I'm going to take just a moment. Uh, some of you probably want to leave. If you do, that's fine. If you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, that's also fine. But I'm just going to take a real brief pause in the action here uh, if you wish to leave. <coughs> All right, we have come to our first section of public comment for the evening. I've got a couple of folks that are signed up tonight, if I can find the list. I have uh, Mrs. Mary Moore, uh, who is uh, signed up. Is Ms. Moore here? If you would come up to the podium, please. And uh, if you would, please state your name and address for the record for the clerk, please. Greenway Drive, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28546. Need a phone number? No, that, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> we wouldn't want checking. you to get any bad phone calls. Like <laughs> okay. I'm just here to, you know, give you a public thank you to my members. Uh, at this time, officers, just raise your hand so you know who the officers are. Thank you. Okay, to Mr. Sammy Phillips Mill, Mr. Richard Woodruff, and to this wonderful council, all of you members, to your visiting guests, to each and every one of you, good evening. I stand before you to publicly thank you for letting us march down Newbridge Street. Mm -hmm. I thank you for letting us assemble in the back of City Hall, Mr. Richard, Mr. Glenn Hargett, everywhere he's at, Miss Camilla George. I came and I had a little meeting with them. And they just stretched their arms out to this MLK, keeping the dream alive. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't know how much that means to us, because we're a little group trying to keep the dream alive. And to you, Mr. Jerome Willingham, we just thank you also. Some of you, I might don't call your name, but you know who you are. I thank you. You, he attended the whole thing, he, the march, the program, and he just sit there until it was over. And I just want this council to know you got good council members, and he even had lunch with us. And I just want to thank everybody. I just can't thank you enough. And I know my minutes probably up, but... Uh, to God be the glory for all the good things he has done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. And, and thank you all for coming out tonight. Mm -hmm. It's very, very nice thank of you. you to come forward and, and, and thank us. And we were very, we were very happy to help.
Thank you. Uh, I have Mr. Kevin O'Connor. Uh, good evening, Mayor, City Council, Kevin O'Connor, 210 Newport Drive. Um, approximately five, six cents of the uh, last property tax increase by the City of Jacksonville was directly attributable to the Onsville County Board of Commissioners changing the sales tax distribution to the ad valorem. Uh, here are the numbers. Uh, Surf City, North Topsail Beach, each one of the residents gets a little over, uh, I'm sorry, approximately $1,350. Swansboro gets uh, $272 per resident. Jacksonville is pulling up the rear at $133 per resident inside the city of Jacksonville. If we were to switch it to the 60-40, Jacksonville is still pulling up the rear, uh, but they're getting $157. Now, my question is, is why would the Board of Commissioners change the sales tax distribution a year before reevaluation? Answer is very simple. They ran their savings account down to the bare minimum of the 8%. And what happened is, is if you go back to two county commissioner forums ago, what happened is there was absolutely nothing that they could cut out of the budget. If you go to the 2013 budget message by the county, they were running two cents below revenue neutral. You go into a couple of the budget meetings, they said that they couldn't take anything out of savings. All they got out of that was approximately $1.2 million with the additional money going down mostly to North Topsail Beach, Surf City, as well as Swansboro. So what I'm here to say is it's coming up on voting time. Jacksonville residents need to go out and vote. And basically what happened is Commissioner Eichner, Commissioner Buchanan, and Commissioner Jarman basically changed that sales tax distribution in order to get $1.2 million. Me personally, I could have handled it a little bit better if they had just come out and said, hey, you know what? We did a great job of doing the budget. We ate up our savings account. We need to raise property tax one cent throughout the county in order to keep the state out from uh, coming in and taking over the budget because that's all it was. $1.2 million to the county is approximately one cent. I could have handled that a lot better than every single property owner inside the city of Jacksonville eating five, six cents, as well as all the commercial properties eating five or six cents out of that. It's coming up on voting time. And again, we need to go back to the 60-40. Now, last 30 seconds that I have, if we were to go to the per capita, every single resident in the county would get approximately $170. Me personally, I don't think the per capita is necessarily the best way to go. I don't think the straight ad valorem is the best way to go. There were a lot of people that went into work, the 60-40, including the state house and uh, legislature, and everybody needs to get out and vote. And thank you very much. The Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts are great. Um, I have a life member of Gold Award and a Silver Award, and I have an Eagle Scout in my house. And most importantly, you guys did a fantastic job you guys did a fantastic job, JPD, on 2nd Marine Division. Thank you very much. All right, we are now have come to adoption of our uh, minutes and the consent items on tonight's agenda. Uh, we have one meeting, uh, minutes for one meeting from February 2nd, 2016. It was a regular workshop meeting, and, and this time I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes from that meeting and also the consent items to include the uh, deletion and add ons. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to uh, some old business, and this is a uh, map amendment. And let me get to it here. This is a uh, rezoning from uh, RS, uh, residential single family seven to office and industrial at 140 Piney Green Road. And Jeremy Smith will be uh, presenting this item. Jeremy. Mr. Mayor, last 
Oh, yeah, that's right. Jeremy's comments being that public hearing. Okay. So we'll go ahead and reconvene the public hearing in this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you recall, at your January 19th meeting, I presented this uh, rezoning request by Jacksonville, or excuse me, Uni United Pentecostal Church of Jacksonville, located at 140 Piney Green Road. Just to remind you of this location near the intersection of Piney Green and North Marine Boulevard. Their original request was to rezone, rezone from RSF7 to O and I. At that January 19th meeting, a, uh, there were some concerns brought up by an adjacent property owner, and council deferred their decision to tonight's meeting so staff could work with the applicant. Since that time, the applicant has modified the request to O and I C, or conditional office and institutional. The conditions they are asking are to limit the use uses only to religious institution and daycare staff has reviewed this modification updated the planning board at its february 2016 meeting and found that it is still consistent with both recommendations therefore we are recommending approval of this request from rsf7 to office institutional conditional office institutional with findings of fact a through j being found in the affirmative and that the rezoning advances the public interest, interest by correcting a non-conforming use and makes it consistent with the future land use map. The applicant, as well as representatives from Parker and Associates and staff, will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Mayor, I think the Jeremy made contact with Mr. John Jackson, who was the citizen who spoke last time, and yes. he's not here this evening, so I presume he's... Yes, I spoke with Mr. Jackson, <clears throat> the, the property owner who had the concerns, and updated him on the modification, and he assured me that met, that made him feel a lot better, and he was comfortable with that modification. on this matter? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and reconvene the regular council meeting. And what you're being asked to do, council, is to approve the rezoning request or consider the proposed modified request. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the uh, modified request um, with findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative and the uh, rezoning advances the public interest by correcting the non-conforming use and makes it consistent with our future uh, land use map. Second. We have a motion in the second. Is there any additional discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this brings us to agenda item number eight for tonight. Uh, this is a public hearing on rezoning from industrial to corridor commercial on Western Boulevard and Lejeune Boulevard. Uh, Lejeune and Western Boulevard, and Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. City Council. Staff is bringing before you a staff-initiated rezoning, proposed rezoning of 31 parcels located at the northwest corner of Lejeune Boulevard and Western Boulevard. Notice on the vicinity map the properties highlighted before you. This is aerial photography of the site. Uh, as you can see, all of the, this is all currently developed property. The Cama Lane Use Plan identifies the 17 parcels along Western Boulevard as regional commercial and the, I believe, 14 along Lejeune Boulevard as office and institutional. This is the current zoning of this, these properties. It is industrial and city staff is requesting that we rezone it to corridor commercial. Uh, that would make it consistent with the Camelane use plan for those properties along Western Boulevard. And if staff is directed to update the Cama, those 14 along Lejeune Boulevard would be updated or consistent with the land use plan. Um, this came about, uh, staff was asked to do a zoning verification for one of the properties out there, the Liberty Inn, and we identified that is in a, an industrial zoning, therefore non-conforming under the UDO's use table. So if that site was to burn down or be destroyed, they would not be able to rebuild. So that had staff look at this area as a whole, and we identified all those properties along Lejeune Boulevard and Western before you all are more suitable to be zoned corridor commercial because of the uses. If this zoning was to move forward, there would be a number of existing developments that would be brought into conforming status. 
there would be no new non-conforming statuses created. This is what the rezoning would look like if it was to move forward. If changed, there would be approximately six uses that would go away that are currently allowed in the industrial district, uh, such as boat repair and servicing, concrete, asphalt plant, um, fuel and bottled gas distribution. Those type of uses would no longer be allowed. However, there would be 16 new commercial uses that would be permitted on these properties if they were to redevelop or be reoccupied. City staff presented this to the Planning Advisory Board at their February 8, 2016 meeting. And they, along with staff, are recommending approval of this rezoning request with findings of fact B through J being found in the affirmative and to direct staff to update the camera plan for parcels along the June Boulevard in order to make the finding of fact A to also be found in the affirmative and find that the zoning rezoning advances the public interest by allowing for more orderly and logical development. City staff will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Council, questions? Mr. Thomas. Uh, how did it come about that this was industrial and office in the first place? I, I, um, we received a zoning verification application for the Liberty Inn. Right. And in doing that, um, it was determined that that property is currently mm -hmm. zoned industrial. And we presented that letter to the applicant, and you know, that obviously caused some issues with them get, with an existing use that was non-conforming. And so as we looked at that, we identified those other properties in this area. Um, it's just historically just been zoned that way. There are a number of other areas in the city, um, specifically those along the old railroad <coughs> corridor that are currently zoned industrial that city staff may be bringing forward at future dates for this same type of rezoning. Um, the development just does not reflect that type of use anymore, and it is more consistent with our Camelanius plan. Yeah, let me let so, me add a comment uh, to that. When we adopted green as go, it's okay, sorry about that. <coughs> when we adopted the new UDO in April of uh, 15, to, uh, 14. 14. Okay. <coughs> We tried to make as few uh, changes in the zoning as possible. So if it was uh, industrial, it went to industrial. What we should have done in hindsight is to go a step further and to look back at the actual uses because what happened was the use table that was allowed under the previous zoning is a different use table than is allowed under the UDO. But when we made the direct conversion of industrial to industrial, it resulted in these properties and we believe some others becoming non-conforming. It is appropriate for us to be proactive now that this has been brought to our attention. As Jeremy said, this is the first of several that you will hear where we will be correcting and changing the zoning because of what we found in this research. Yeah, I didn't want to beat a dead horse here, but I thought we changed this during our last land use map update a, a lot of these properties should have been shifted over I, i'm just i'm like randy i'm surprised because i thought for sure that we updated it with our last land use update but apparently we didn't i thought it was all changed particularly on the corridor 17 and, and western and western extension 24 because we changed all those do you remember that the land use plan reflects just as you stated. We just didn't take the But I next thought that when we adopted that change, we changed the zoning with it. We made it a point not to rezone anybody's property. That's what we're taking yeah, okay. steps to do now. But the CAMA plan does reflect the corridor commercial plan. So now we're just bringing those back into compliance. Okay. So we didn't... The only exception for tonight is this blue area at the bottom along Lejeune Boulevard. That's office. We're going to convert that from office to quarter yeah, commercial. That makes complete sense. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. Thank you for clearing that up. Any other questions of Jeremy? Okay. All right. We're going to recess the uh, regular council meeting and open up public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present wishes to speak to this agenda item? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, Councilor, you're being asked to uh, approve the uh, requested rezoning. Mayor Phillips, I'll move that we approve the request of rezoning, findings of fact B through J being found in the affirmative and direct staff to uh, do the updates on the camera plan. 
with the, those parcels identified in order to make the findings of fact A to also be found in the affirmative and find that the rezoning advances a public interest. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to agenda item number nine. This is a voluntary annexation uh, petition on the Paul J. Beecham Senior Trust of 1.14 acres on Western Boulevard Extension. This is Marine, Credit, Marine Federal Credit Union and Ron's going to ask he's going to present this item. Ron. This voluntary annexation petition was received from Tricorp Investments LLC on behalf of Carl J. Beecham Senior Trust for a 1.14 acre parcel that is contiguous to the current city boundaries. The tract is located in Western Boulevard Extension adjacent to Marine Federal Credit Union and across from Forum Road. The site is surrounded by <clears throat> the corporate limits. The developers anticipate combining this and the adjacent property in order to develop an Aldi grocery store on this site. The uh, cost and revenues analysis has determined that over the five, first five years, the net revenues will be $176,060. Uh, staff recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Any questions of Mr. Massey? All right, we're going to recess the regular council meeting and open up the required public hearing on this uh, annexation ordinance. Anyone present wishes to speak to this matter? I see no one. I will close the public hearing and reconvene the regular council meeting. Council, you've been at, uh, asked to consider the annexation ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move that the annexation ordinance be approved by the city council. And second, and second. And any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Brings us to agenda item number 10 for the night's meeting. And this is a uh, also community outreach. Um, and this is a request for additional funding. And Lily Gray, our community development administrator, will be presenting this item. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. I'm here tonight on behalf of Oslo Community Outreach to request additional funding for the installation of islands, curb and gutter, underground utility sleeves, overlay of the parking lot, and other site improvements mm -hmm. as needed at 1210 Harder Street, which is the location of the new homeless shelter. Um, as you may recall, um, back in October, you approved $150,000 to help with the installation of the uh, sprinkler system. That project is underway, so this will be considered a phase two, which would um, move the project to the exterior of the facility and begin some site improvements that would be very beneficial to the community. So we're asking that you would um, allow us to amend our 2014-2015 annual action plan to award the additional $130,000 for this purpose, and it would be provided in the form of a deferred forgivable loan for 10 years. Any questions? Council, any questions? Ms. Gray. One additional comment we would like to make. Uh, it is understood in our discussions with the Onzo Community Outreach that these funds must be expended by the last day of April 2016. Any funds that are not expended by that time will therefore revert back to the city. This is not, this is, uh, there is a time sensitive nature to these funds. And we want the record to clearly understand that these funds must be totally expended as with the 150000 originally loaned as a forgivable loan by that date or the balance is, is relinquished to the city. This last 130, is that the last? This will, this will accomplish the goal that we have regarding the expenditure of the Community Development Block Grant funds along with other actions that we're currently taking. Council, any questions, Ms. Gray? Thank you. Right, we'll be asked to uh, amend the 2014-2015 uh, annual action plan and also to award an additional $130,000 for this purpose. Move. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries. All right. So we uh, are, we're going to have another section of public comment. Did anybody else come in that didn't get a chance to sign and wishes to speak? Raise your hand. All right. We're going to go on to the report section for tonight's meeting. I'm going to start out with Mayor Pro Tem Lazar. I think you have a report prepared. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to share with you, um, as I put at each of your desks, the um, feasibility feasibility report that we received. Um, at our TDA meeting. As you know, our Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority commissioned a study on um, sports and, and what sports would be um, most uh, valuable to our community in creating overnight stays in our lodging facilities. Um, as most of you know, sports tourism is a, over a $6 billion industry in our country. And here in Jacksonville alone, uh, uh, sports create over two million dollars per year in economic development uh, or economic impact I should say and so sports is a, is a big business um, so we entered into a study with the uh, SFA which is a sports facility advisory group of a well-renowned group that does this business all over the United States and some foreign uh, places uh, even Evan Elif of the sports advisory presented the final report last week um, at our meeting indicating a group of sports to include volleyball basketball pickleball and um, similar court-based activities that could create a new market for overnight stays um, creating an enduring facility uh, for the play of those sports and before you have a lot of information and a lot of detailed information um, but in a, in a summary, uh, they proposed an 88,000 square foot facility. Uh, a no beam facility basically means that, that 88,000 feet of convertible space that you can, can be utilized for various different sports and events, uh, a multi-purpose uh, facility. Uh, this study did not seek any means of financing the project. Um, basically, it talked about what sports, the numbers, the revenues those sports would create, the economic development, the overnight stays that these sporting activities would generate, and also some projected uh, uh, cash flows in and cash flows out. So, um, again, I, I provided that so that you have the opportunity to look at it and, um, and um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate. And if the council would further uh, like a complete presentation, I can make that happen as well. Um, I was pleased that the chairman and the vice chairman of the Onslow County Board of Commissioners, the sports commission chairman, vice chairman, executive director, our city staff, Richard Woodruff, uh, was also present. Uh, it was a very good presentation, a lot of information to digest, and certainly we are at a very uh, early part of this process of investigating the opportunities that may be be presented in our community. So uh, if you, any of you have any questions, please do not hesitate to shoot them at me and I'll do my best to, to get you an answer. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Warden. No comments, sir. I mean, no, yeah, no, no report. report. No report. Yeah. Mr. Thomas. Uh, no report. Thank you. Ms. Washington. Um, I just want to report from the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Group that we did not have an opportunity to meet this month. Um, due to a lack of quorum and also in preparation that some of our members were volunteers for the second marine division this year but I want to comment that the subcommittees have been meeting and um, we are in preparation of finalizing our plans for the Arbor Day ceremony and this year will be our 36th anniversary as a tree city for the city of Jacksonville so information will be forthcoming soon about Arbor Day celebration Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one thing I'd like to suggest for our calendar, we don't recognize Black History Month on our city calendar. I'd like if we could do that and maybe the city manager could uh, check and see if there's a consensus amongst council to, to, to support that recognition on, on our calendar. Um, and maybe one of the pictures would be of this fine group and all the work that, that they have done. 
And uh, Ms. Moore, if you could come forward and talk about your scholarship activities. We are aware of, a lot of people are aware of your march and your keeping the dream al alive, but a major part of what you all do is your scholarship. If you could just comment about your scholarship activity. Yes, sir. We do give three scholarships, and we ask that each student fill out the application the way that we have them to fill it out and what they're saying, what college they're planning to attend. We want from their school the grade point average. Also, we put in there, we ask in that what church they belong to, you know, making sure the children is on the right track. We just don't want to just give money. We're making sure the money is going for a good cause. Mm -hmm. And how we accumulate the little money, this group you see here, we only do a $25 donation each year. We have a 50-50 little raffle, and we ask anybody, including you too, <laughs> for a little donation. And that what enables us to give these students a scholarship. And this year, we gave three, $300. We gave $900, our little group. Very good. Okay. So you see, we need help from you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. In uh, March, I uh, hopefully will be attending the National League of Cities. And one of the um, objectives that um, I'll be working on is the, the resolution that the um, uh, National League of Cities um, Black Caucus um, passed in support of the uh, a national holiday for the 13th Amendment to the uh, United States Constitution. Um, we, um, with great pride and patriotism, um, um, enjoy our 4th of July celebration every year, which was for political freedom. And it's time that we recognize the human freedom that resulted from the um, adoption of the 13th Amendment. And la last year, it was 150 years since the adoption. And um, even the, um, the 4th of July ce celebration as a national holiday, um, it took about 100 years, I think, before that became a national holiday. So uh, it's important, and it's not just as a historical rec recognition. Um, it looks forward also. The uh, Civil War, there were um, 640,000 casualties. That amount uh, surpassed all of the casualties uh, up until the Vietnam War of all the foreign, all the other wars put together. So we all know the, the impact that that had on um, the history and our lives. So, um, but again, I say it looks forward too because it's prospective. Um, uh, there's about 800,000 people involved in human trafficking. Human trafficking is a major problem and we need to focus on that. And perhaps a, a day of that kind of recognition would help deal with that. 800,000 people worldwide involved in human trafficking, and a lot of those slaves are here. And um, it's a $32 billion industry, uh, human trafficking, billion. And so um, hopefully um, something like this can um, give a little more focus and attention to that. So that's one of the things that we'll be trying to meet with the um, uh, federal legislators in um, in March. Nothing further. Okay. Mr. Benton? Yes, Mayor. Um, this is the first meeting we've had since the 2nd Marine Division 75th anniversary troops marched through downtown Jacksonville. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the pride that I had, and I'm sure you'd share, in the great job the city organization did and paving the way for what was an awe-inspiring awe parade. Uh, the letter to the editor from the Second Marine Division General said it much more eloquently than me in terms of the thanks and appreciation for making their troops 
feel just like home going through Jacksonville and the event at the park thereafter. I'd also like to thank the Civic Affairs Committee, who on short notice pitched in and acted as ushers, made special arrangements to help, help guests get around, and uh, they, along with all the other volunteers, truly made us proud of the kind of community we are. And I just want to relay my thanks and appreciation. That's it. Thank you. And uh, I was going to say a few things about it, but I'll cut my comments short. Uh, I know that when General Pedroff uh, first approached us here at City Hall about this, I, I think there were some hesitations on his part as to what to expect from us, but I think we, I, uh, based on the letter uh, that he did write and post in the Daily News, I think he was very satisfied with the outcome. Um, uh, had the opportunity to attend the parade. Uh, it was a it was very a wonderful event. It was one of the uh, probably one of the greatest events that's occurred in this town in, in many many years. And uh, just to see all uh, all those young Marines and uh, some of them weren't so young, but you know all those young Marines uh, marching down uh, the. Uh, New Bridge Street, you could see the pride on their faces, mm -hmm. uh, it, but I hope they saw the pride on ours, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know, what they do for this country, but it was a great event. It turned out really well, and again, you know, I want to echo uh, Mr. Bittner's uh, thanks to the staff from our city and the volunteers that made it all possible, and it turned out, it, it couldn't have turned out any better than it did, so uh, kudos on that, and uh, anyway, with that, Dr. Woodruff. Glenn, if you'll please come in from the control room. Does he get another award? Or wherever. Here we go. The gentleman on the staff that made the parade possible uh, is our own Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> and I think that you would like to join me in commending Glenn for a job well done. goes to you, um, council members. Um, indeed, uh, we just merely acted on your behalf. It was a large team of people, not just me. It was a large team of people who helped put this together. And um, with the collaboration of the Tourism Development Authority, uh, <coughs> doing some financial backing for it and some other things that happened, I think that um, we did fulfill the, the statement that, Mayor, you made on December the 17th to uh, <coughs> command the general. So, these are good things. Thank you, sir. Well done, Glenn. A couple of other things. Uh, the city is nearing the, the erection of a new fence at the, city, at the city cemetery. We want to let the public know that when you begin to see some trees along Hargett and trees along 24 adjacent to the cemetery being removed, it's an anticipation of the new cemetery fence. Uh, mayor and council are aware of this. We would certainly remind the public that that fence is made possible through the donation of the estate of Mrs. Kovich. The city will forever be grateful for what she has done. And obviously, the executor of her state, Mrs. Waters, is overseeing the project. Also, we would like to inform the public that over the next several months, there will be a number of trees along Western Boulevard that will be removed. Under the new state legislation, any tree that blocks the billboards is allowed to be removed. The city does not have the ability to block that. On the other hand, we are working with the billboard industry so that when those trees are removed, that new landscaping will be put back in its place. Uh, lastly, we would uh, like to mention that uh, the accounting has now come in relative to the Christmas lights. Over the last several years, the city has worked as part of its 3E project, which is economy, effectiveness, efficiency, and we are converting more and more of our lights to LEDs. Ron Massey, the deputy manager, has worked closely with both of the power companies. And you will notice throughout the city that many of our street lights are now LEDs. We spend over $400,000 a year just on street lights. We spend over $400,000 a year just on street lights. That's more than one full mill or cent of your tax. By going to LEDs, we are getting a lower bill. 
And I'll give you a quick example. At Christmas, we put up, obviously, the Christmas lights. Over the last two years, we've converted all of our Christmas lights to LEDs. That resulted in a savings this Christmas in just the, what, three months, two and a half months that they were up of almost $6,000. So we want the public to know that the city staff and the mayor and council every day try to find ways to hold down the cost of the taxpayer, and that's just a good example. Lastly, as always, mayor and members of council, thank you for your leadership and the guidance you give us. Thank you. No report, Mayor. Thank you. With that, uh, we're going to have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.